the book of Daniel chapter 4. Daniel chapter 4 from verse 25. That they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, and gives it to whomsoever he will. Verse 26. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. After that, thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. May the Lord bless his word and give us insight, illumination, revelation, deep wisdom understanding and knowledge scriptural spiritual relevant knowledge that will put us far above every challenge of life as god the most high and the heavens do rule let it be in jesus precious name amen i'm speaking on heavens do rule if you look at the book of Luke chapter number 11 from verse 1, Bible says Jesus Christ prayed and as he was done with praying, his disciples asked him to teach them to pray just as John taught his disciples. And he began by saying to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be the name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done as in heaven so in the earth he says you should pray and say give us day by day our daily bread verse 4 forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into evil but deliver us from every evil that's where Luke stopped. Now go to chapter 6 of the book of Matthew. And from verse 9 to verse 13, Jesus said, When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, our sins, our transgressions, our iniquities. As we forgive those who has trespassed against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, thine is the power, and thine is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Anywhere God is, his kingdom is. God and his kingdom are inseparable. God and the heaven are inseparable. Anywhere God is, heaven manifests there because God, who is the king in heaven and rules over all in heaven, rules anywhere he gets to, anywhere he arrives at, anywhere he is. Whenever the kingdom of God is established in any place, it is the resultant effect of God in display. What do I mean? He says what we read. Look at the Bible. Look at the Bible. Daniel chapter number 4 verse 25. He said, this will happen till thou know. Till you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men. The most high rules in the kingdom of men. And gives his kingdom to whomsoever he will. And in verse 26 he says, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee. Yes, yes. After that thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule. The heavens do rule. It's a fact of scripture. It's the truth that nobody can ever be able to alter. He says, because our father is in heaven and wants his name to be honored, he says we should pray that his kingdom come. 
and that his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, that's what we are. When heavens do rule, whatever is happening in heaven happens here on earth. I will say that again. Whenever heavens do rule, when the God of all flesh, with whom nothing is impossible, is ruling, you see the clearest evident manifestation of what heaven stands for here on earth presently. What is the requirement for his kingdom rule to be established here on earth? What does it take for his kingdom to come? What is the principal requirements for the establishment of the rule of heaven here on earth? For his kingdom to come, there is the need for his power to be manifested. For God's kingdom to come, there is the requirement for the power of the Most High to be manifested. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Until the power of God is revealed, his kingdom cannot be established. Until the power of God is revealed, his presence cannot be manifested. Until the power of God is revealed, is made known to the people, is showcased, is manifested, is demonstrated, nobody will know that God is here. So there is the need for the evident, distinct, clear manifestation of the power of God on earth if everyone will see his kingdom established. So the principal requirement that must be engaged for his kingdom to be established is the power of God. And we know, according to the Bible, the power of God is in the custodianship of the Spirit of God. Anywhere the Spirit of God is, there his power is. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, ye shall receive power after, not until you have received the Holy Spirit, after you have received the Holy Spirit. So, Power from God comes through his spirit. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good healing all them that were present with the devil, for God was with him. Jesus said, that's acting that yet. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to proclaim deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind. He has sent me to set at liberty those who are bruised, oppressed or crushed, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, the year of liberty by the engagement of the power of God, the year of absolute, undeniable liberty for all, regardless of the reasons for their captivity, bondage or oppression. For the kingdom of God to be manifested, there must be the evident manifestation of the power of God. That is why when people don't understand this, they play church or religion, thinking that that is Christianity. If you look at the book of Luke, chapter 11, where, we, where I spoke from, where I read, verses 1, 2, 13, and 20, you see that Christ prayed. After the prayers, he taught us to pray for the kingdom of our Father who is in heaven to manifest, for heaven to come to this earth. He prayed that we should ask God for his will to be done on earth as in heaven. For the will of God to be done means whatever is not happening here should not happen here on earth. Now, for that to become a reality, there is need for the clear, evident manifestation of the proofs of the engagement of God's power. If we engage God's power, there are proofs, results to show, to demonstrate that we are using God's power. Now, Jesus Christ said in verse 13, he said, if people who are wicked as men can give their children good gifts, how then, how much more then do you think that the Father of all, our Father in heaven, will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Jesus Christ prayed. He said we should pray. When we pray, we should say that our fathers will be done as in heaven. And for that to be done, there is need for the engagement of the power of the Holy Spirit. So we, he said we should pray for God to give us the best gift, his good gift, which is called the Holy Spirit. And in verse 20, he said, If I cast out devils by the finger of God, then 
the kingdom of God has come. Now, in interpreting this in Matthew 12 and verse 28, the Bible says, If I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come. It takes the engagement of the power available through the coming of the Holy Spirit into a believer's life for the kingdom of God to be established. Because the war we are fighting, if I may, if I may use that word permissively, is not against human beings or flesh and blood. The war we are fighting is against spirits, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against evil and wicked spirits in many places. The war we are fighting is against diabolical forces, unclean spirits, all forms of demoniacs. And for us to dislodge them, we need to engage the power of the Holy Spirit, the creator of these unclean spirits. Listen, Satan and all his demons or devils that were in heaven before sin entered the devil. And he came down with one third of the demons, of the angels that have not turned to evil spirits or demons. Listen, Satan does not procreate. The devil cannot create anything. And angels don't procreate. They don't give birth. So the number of angels that Satan came down with from heaven has remained their number. They can only put themselves into human beings and through human beings manifest their evils on earth today. Now we are empowered to stop the devil, to give him no place, to resist him and to send him away. We have been empowered to dislodge him and destroy him if we see him anywhere. Jesus Christ destroyed the devil. He has defeated the devil. All we are here to do is to enforce the victory of Christ on the cross. And I'm telling you that requires the engagement of the power of the Holy Spirit. Until we have been given this power, we can't in any way exercise dominion relationship over these devils to the extent of being enabled and empowered to establish God's kingdom. So, it is important for you to know that for the kingdom of God to rule here on earth, for what God wants them to be done here, we need the power of God to enforce the will of our Father here on earth as it is done in heaven. So, for the will of God to be done on earth as in heaven, it means His power must be engaged and then His glory can be revealed. It means that his power must be engaged for his glory to be revealed on earth as it is in heaven. That's what we are told. Remember, heavens do rule. And for heavens to rule, there is need for us to engage the power of God. God rules. His kingdom rules. If we want to see him rule where we are, we must understand that the engagement of God's power is a non-negotiable requirement. The question is, do you have that power? If not, you can get that power today. How? If you are not born again, first be born again. Because the gift of the Holy Spirit is given to God's children. God does not give his Holy Spirit to those who are not his children. No. Christ came here, lived and died, and went back to heaven so that he can send the Holy Spirit to us. And on the day of Pentecost, he sent the Holy Spirit. And since that time, he is here. For you to have the Holy Spirit live in you and dwell in in you and through you and reach out to the world through your life if you are eager to be empowered with the holy spirit you must understand that you need to be born again once you are born again then you need to ask the father to give you the holy spirit as he promised and christ will send him that's all if you are not born again the first thing is to be born again that's all the first thing to do is to be born again. How do you become born again? Very simple. You believe that Jesus Christ is God's son who came and died for his sake, was buried, and on the third day, God raised him back to life. Once you believe that and confess this same Jesus as your Savior and as your Lord, the, the rest will be history. You become born again. And if you are born again, even with nobody praying for you, you can ask the Father for the Holy Ghost, and he will give you the Holy Spirit. But if you are in a church where your pastor is a believer who is full of the Holy Ghost, listen, you can ask him, to pray for you and lay hands on you because that's a channel of transfer praying and laying hands upon people peter in acts of the apostles verse 8 from verse 14 to verse 17 go to samaria where philip had done a very great work people were born again people were healed but they didn't have the holy spirit they were baptized but they didn't have the holy spirit philip couldn't give them the holy spirit so he had to call peter and john and john and peter as a peter and john as they got there prayed for them 
and laid their hands on them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 19, from verse 4 to verse 12, you see the story of Paul when he got to Ephesus. So, some, from verse 1, as a matter of fact, from verse 1, he saw people who were walking and asked them, Since you are, they were walking, I don't understand. Are you full of the Holy Ghost? They said, We've not even heard if there's anything like the Holy Spirit. Unto them, where they baptized, they asked them, They said, Well, unto John's baptism. So, Paul had to speak to them about Christ. They got the word, were born again, and then they were baptized. And then they spoke in tongues and prophesied as he laid his hands on them. Paul laid his hands on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. And each of them aside and began to teach them the gospel, the word. In a period of time, three, three months, people began to raise eyebrows. He took them to one school of one Mr. Tyrannus and then taught them. And for 18 months, and in two years' time, all of Asia heard the word. Things happened to a level that handkerchiefs and aprons from the body of Paul were taken to the sick. And uh, the power of God, which is the principal requirement for the establishment of the kingdom of God anywhere, went to the people who were sick. Their sicknesses departed. The evil spirits in them were cast out. They were on head of manifestations of the power of God all through Asia. You know why? Because God's kingdom, which rise on the wings of his power, was channeled through Paul to all in the whole of Asia. It is the will of God for God's will to be done on earth as in heaven. But for this to become a reality, there is need for kingdom envoys or ambassadors, Christ ambassadors, to be infused with his power so that they can carry this to everywhere. My prayer for you from today is that you will understand that the kingdom of God will rule. And for this to become a reality where you are, there is need for you to be full of the Holy Spirit. Because anywhere God's Spirit is not present, His power cannot be manifested. And until His manifest, manifest the power is seen everywhere, His rulership cannot be established. May it be said of you that this one is among them, a carrier of the power of God for the establishment of the kingdom of our Father where you are. God blesses my prayer. Don't toy with this simple message. It has a power to change your life forever. Many have been mocked, and many are making a mockery of our God. You know why? Because of their powerlessness. Until you are endued with power from on high, you are unqualified to become his ambassador. Many are preaching who God never sent. Their hunger sent them. Their lack sent them. Their quest, send them. The ambition, send them, not God. Because if God sends you, he must empower you. Many are not empowered because they have not sought God for the empowerment. Please remember, for you to be empowered, you need the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have him, you can ask him into your heart right now. And Christ, who has paid the full price, will give you the Holy Spirit. And as you have him, you are going to manifest him from now. My prayer for you again is that you will be wise to go for the power that will make our Father's kingdom manifest visible where you are god bless you in jesus name amen now if you are sick you can't have the power of god and remain sick i therefore speak over your life right now whatever is happening in your life that is not planted by god that is causing the disease i cast out right now my words carry more power than the handkerchiefs that went from paul when i speak what i say happens instantly I'm telling you right now, you may not even believe it, but you're going to see it happen right now. No matter what your challenge is, in the name of Jesus Christ, I demand your freedom. You see, if you see a man who has a trillion dollars, for him to give you a check of one billion, he doesn't need to speak in tongues. He does not need to shout. Either he takes his, his card or whatever and transfer the money to your account or he sends a check and gives you it doesn't struggle sometimes because we don't shout most of us think we are joking i don't need to share because i have what i'm giving you in super abundant measure beyond your human comprehensions measure i have his power and capacity to do what he has done and more than he has done and i don't need to shout for you to see this manifest i'm telling you in an irrevocable way that from this moment you are free from whatever is called sickness or disease anywhere you are it doesn't matter how far away you are 
at this moment in time as you are hearing me every planting of the devil in you is leaving you right now not after now right now if you have that evil plague right inside your bone i command it to live now in the name of jesus christ the word is become powerful the word is quick and powerful sharper than any two else what it can pierce through the right bone and marrow soul and spirit can separate them there is nothing that can be hidden from this word when i speak it gets into anywhere god didn't have to speak when christ said it is finished all the dead people were released the earthquake that erupted because of the word of christ it is finished open graves open rocks dead people came out when christ rose from the dead all of them marched out nobody went to any place to buy them clothes god clothed them there's a power that can create clothing that can create flesh that can create eyes that can create anything it is in the world i'm saying it to you right now anything that you need to be who god wants to be as god is i decrease and release to you right now whatever is not in line with this dictate and command is removed from you now in the name of jesus christ it is so done god bless my prayer in Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Peace.